we even know if the, the people are going to show up this time for the Apple Lane ones? They, oh, no. uh, they were on the agenda last time, and they Maybe, they they won't. Third Maybe they won't show up this time either. Those two are for the glamping thing. The glamp okay. ground. That one's fun. I don't know that one. It, it does. You know, it, that's a funny coincidence. Just down, not too far, uh, Riverside Drive, um, there's a, what used to be called the French Broad River Campground. Yeah. It's being bulldozed right now. Yeah. And it, and I stopped to talk to those uh, construction workers. It's because they're putting like in a, um, they actually didn't refer to it as a glamp ground, but it's a uh, Airstream campground. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like no another kidding. campground. Are you aware of that? <laughs> Another one just up the river. <laughs> so, great minds think alike, I guess. Yeah, there's so much going on around here. It is. Yeah. Oh, okay. It is. It's not in the it's it's further not in north. The yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, airstream. Yeah. I mean, you have to have an airstream to go there? No, they're going to have them there. Oh, they're so, going to be there. Right, already. they're going to be stationed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They're pretty expensive, those old mm -hmm. ones. Wow. I'll call the yeah, meeting yeah, to order tonight. Um, I guess the first thing on the agenda is, um, so I would like to do a roll call of who's here. How, what is the best way to do that, for the record? Just, just uh, have them go down and say their name. Okay. Stephanie Gosnell. Uh, Chris DeRoney. Michael Bennett. Patricia Hoffman. Scott Hanson. Thank you. Just so we have it officially who's here. Um, approval of the agenda. Um, is there anything we have to do for that? We have to actually vote on that? Motion on a second. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll a second. second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's approved unanimous. Uh, approval of the minutes from last month. Are there any questions from the board members on that? Okay. I have approval of the minutes. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Approved. I did. So. Okay. Uh, at this time, we would like to open the meeting up to the public. Right. This time, we're doing public comment, so you can just go over that paragraph underneath public comment. Okay. Everyone, everyone wishing to address the board must sign up with the town clerk 15 minutes prior to the meeting. Each speaker will be recognized by the chair when it is their time to be heard. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker, and the time allotted to the public comment will be the discretion of the chair. I'm sorry, what was... What? Go ahead and ask if anybody's here. Okay, is anybody here from the uh, public to make comments tonight? In general, general comments. Okay. Yes, yeah, no one's out of for the okay. public here, so... Okay, seeing none, we will move on to old business. And it appears we have no old business. Okay, we'll move right along. Okay, that brings us to new business. Item number one. Um, do you want me to announce this? Or, okay. Item number one is public hearing variance. The proposed property is zoned for R7 is located at 9999 Apple Lane. Further identified in Buncombe County parcel identification number is 9730-80-8269. Variance request is for encroachment upon 20-foot side yard setback and construction of two family, uh, LA two family dwelling. Do we have anyone here for this application tonight? So I, do we have to make a motion to so we've already we already postponed it once. Should we postpone it again or? Yeah, you just make the motion like you did last time to motion to the second to continue it to be. Okay. To okay. The next so we look. Would someone like to make a motion to continue this thing? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. So item number one will be postponed till or continue to next month. Um, I guess item number two, public hearing variance. The property also is zoned R7 located at 6 Apple Lane. Further identified, Buckingham County parcel identification number 9730-80-7390. The variance request is for encroachment upon the required 20-yard setback for construction of a two-family dwelling. Is there, I'm assuming no, but anybody in the audience uh, for this application? No. Okay, do I have a motion to continue yeah, this till next month? I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number three takes us a special use permit. This property is located in the zone community of shopping and is located at 99999 Old Lester Highway. 
Further identified by Buncombe County parcel identification numbers 9720-93-2624. The special use permit request is for a, and correct me if I say this wrong, glam ground? I forgot the PD, but I looked at it today, it should be glamped ground. Glamped? Glamped. G-L-A-M-P. Oh, glamped glamp ground, okay. For a glamp ground. So there is someone here for this, and they'll give you a, a presentation of what that's going to look like. But I just wanted to clarify what we're doing. Um, so they have asked for a glamp ground to be located on this property, and our zoning ordinance does not reference glamp ground, nor does it reference campground. But in my conversations with the applicant, they had referenced maid service and things like that that would be similar to a hotel or motel. Mm. So this use request is for Hotel Motel Inn, um, and that requires a special use permit in this zoning district. So that's what you're hearing tonight. I want to remind you, the zoning ordinance doesn't have specific standards for Hotel Motels Inn, so you don't have to worry about that, but you will have to apply your decision to the standards listed for general special use permits that's on your memo that was in your packet. Mm -hmm. And I'll, now I'll ask you to come up. Adrian, Ready. May, I, may I ask a question? Yeah. For clarity. So if we were to approve this for this purpose, given that it is for the larger category, could it end up being any of that over time based on this approval? Mm. You would be approving the site plan that's in front of you tonight. Just this. Okay. This is so funny. Oh. If you don't mind, because then I have slight changes. Yeah. Do they have to be sworn in? Oh, yes. Just wait. No, I, was patient, no, no. I was patiently waiting. <laughs> I have to ask that. I'm telling you, I can think when I'm not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think when I'm in charge. I've been sworn in, too, so I'm going to stand up there. And who does that? Yeah. And do I have a script we, to read from? Read it. Uh, where is the script? Let's see. Let's see if we have one here. Okay. Um, we're seeing anything. Yeah. You don't happen to have the information. I'm getting it right now. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a line. Got it. Shall we? Yeah. It's just the appointments to tell the whole truth. I know I read on TV. I'll watch on TV. Okay. And are you going to testify also? Should we swear you? Yeah. I guess we should swear you in at the same time, get them all done. Okay. So all persons who wish to speak, can please come forward and raise your right hand. After the swearing, you may return to your seat. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you, God? Yeah, it is. Okay. I, can, I know that one, actually. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay. Well, hello, and thanks for your time and consideration of this project. I'm Jack Carrier, and this is Casey Connor. He's helping me with the project. Uh, his background's in parks and rec and uh, site planning, land development, environmental stewardship, that kind of thing. Uh, I am the owner of Dog Tag Art, and it's, it operates on the adjacent lot. Uh, just so you know a little bit about, about me, it, this is my main company, uh, nine full-time full employees, and we do ID tags for pets. Then it operates out of that building, right, that you see there. Mm -hmm. um, for reference here, you see Old Lester Highway, and the site in question is labeled here, proposed site, right across the river from the wave. It's accessed by this yellow line that goes through my lot. Uh, the entire five acres there is three separate lots, and I own all three. It's just a shot of the wave, which I'm super excited about. Hope that's going well. So glamping, what is glamping? It's you take the word glamorous and, and camping and add them together and you get glamping. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who made that up, but it's essentially a, a trendy term meaning a high-end experience 
with kind of non-traditional accommodations. And that can mean, you know, anything from an airstream to a treehouse, a, a dome, or a, a, a tent, uh, all with this kind of quality in mind. Uh, this is a screenshot from a local company uh, called Asheville Glamping, and you can see that, you know, they're doing well. And here's a screenshot from another local company, and they do more tree houses. Uh, so it's kind of a wide range. Uh, drilling in on the site, here is a kind of our, our three to five year master plan. Um, the red circles there represent more of a permanent st structure, whether that be a, an airstream or a tiny house. And the, the yellow lines here represent utilities. Or, you know, right now there's no utilities on the site. The, uh, the solid line, it would be electric coming in. The, uh, the red squares here would be a soft-sided structure, that would be a dome or a tent on a platform, just post and beam construction. Uh, this is just a different way of kind of laying out our proposed timeline. This is a map showing our, our work with land resource management. They they came in and studied the land and said what we may or may not be able to do with the septic load. So the final number there would determine how many units we could do. Six might be the maximum, but if the septic design says, hey, we can only do four, then that's that's the way we would go. So this is the, the definition of hotel, motels, and inns that is allowed in our, our zone. And the, the bold section there is what we feel like really lines up with what we're trying to do. So you can combine that with the, your definition of recreational, recreational vehicle. Uh, so you know, ideally, we have the option of using different accommodations, one being a recreational vehicle or a, a dome or a tent or a tree house. I could see over time the units kind of, you know, it would be nice to have some flexibility over the units. Over time we could end up in a more of a tree house kind of more permanent thing, but it would be great to have some flexibility. We expect the, you know, typical guests would be couples, small groups, people that are exploring the area, you know, I don't imagine this to be a destination resort, so minimal impact to neighbors. They're into the greenway, into the wave, it just kind of fits in with that uh, master plan. These are some of the, our, our values is uh, you know, focus on design and quality with the units. Very low impact to the land itself. Uh, you know, the previous owners did some grading, so it's already it's already flat and graded. So we wouldn't be changing it much anymore besides doing the posts for the uh, for the platforms. Again, we think the guests will be off site, and it's it's a flexible use of the land. We, it's not permanently altered in the future if we wanted to pull all the units and you know, build an actual hotel or, or something, then that would be an option. So that, that, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Okay. Do we do questions or? Um, I do have a question. Uh, in this, in the thing you mentioned about possibly sharing the septic system with the adjacent, which is you, I guess yours, um, it's not going to have its own septic system? Well, that's the, the two options we're weighing with the land resource management company mm -hmm. is what makes the most sense to tap into the office building site, the office building septic, or put in a completely new one. Because if I, it, it's kind of an odd 
septic layout the way it was built but the the previous owner did all this grading and then i think afterwards it determined you can't do septic in a graded area you know it has to be kind of virgin soil so the existing office is the blue rectangle but the septic for that office is the red squares uh, down in the lower lot but the drain field for that septic is in the upper lot. So it actually flows down and then gets pumped all the way up to the upper lot. It's, the it's dark, backwards. It's the dark blue yeah. rectangle up at the top. So your drawing is showing three separate lots? Yes, sir. Yeah. You currently own all three. That's right. I guess my concern or question is if you were to sell one of them and the septic happens to be on that one, what happens to the other ones? That's there would have to be a, a right of way or a, an easement. But uh, is the county will allow you to share septics across lot lines? I have to ask a question because I don't know the answer to that. I, know, I, know. I, know that, I know that I'm not sure about multiple sites in one septic system, mm -hmm. but I know that one septic field can be on another property uh, with an easement. Okay. So one option is to put a tank in the upper lot and just tap into the existing drain field. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be my preference uh, rather than running it all the way down the hill and then back up again. The, the other long-term possibility would be that if when they replace the old lesser highway bridge um, and whether or not there's going to be sewer that is access to that side of the river once they replace that bridge which you know i've heard that it's maybe a possibility maybe not I, i'm not sure what all goes into that um, to determine that but but that, i think that's supposed to be replaced in the next three or four years so when all the phases are complete you will have six sites and maybe two or three people per site so we're looking at like 18 something like that yeah people right. all together I'm, I'm just 12 to trying 15. to find the capacity yeah and the way they're calculating it is each site is essentially you know one bedroom right as far as the get usage of gallons Okay. But, uh, you know, I think the reality is it would be a lot less than that mm -hmm. because the tent, the tent sites would all use one bathhouse, for example. So it's not like each, each site wouldn't have its own kitchen mm -hmm. and bathroom. So I think that alone would really decrease the usage. I think the other important thing is, is that if we're only able to figure out how to get um, say permitted for three which the current the way it's currently laid out we could there's enough capacity to do three sites and that's kind of why we have it set up to do in phases as you know because right now we're still trying to figure out how we're going to do the septic um, but we know that the capacity there on that property fully contained on that property is for three sites so and the county will give you approval for doing this? Have you been involved with them? Yes, uh, we already talked to them extensively about the stormwater and about the erosion control. Um, and then um, once we get the, the report from main resource management, that's when we'll talk to them officially about the septic at that point. Adrian, I have a question that maybe you can answer. So we're, we're approving this for the use variance, correct? Use. Special, Special use. use variance. So there was a comment mentioned that someday they may want to build an actual hotel there. Would they have to come back in for that since we're not really reviewing that? We're, we're looking at putting a couple trailers, six units right now, not a whole hotel. But that was, that that was brought up. That you are approving the use of the property for a hotel motel in, but you're approving right. this site plan. Okay, so if they want to come back and put a hotel someday, they would have to come back in again for this use variance again. Okay, okay, just to make sure that we're not cornering ourselves. 
Uh, do we have any questions from the board? Nope. All right, thank you. Discussion amongst ourselves at this point, right? Yes, yeah, so. Um, do we do we open it back up to the public for comments now that they talked again, or are we just we temporarily close? We can open that? it back up if there was anybody here that had um, any opposing. claim standing and wanted to rebut right. the standing. Okay, so that the standards are met that you're trying that they're trying to prove they meet. That's on your memo. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but nobody's here, so it's open to the board for deliberation and discussion. Okay. We just run down these lists. Yeah. Is there any general mm -hmm. questions? No, but, but I like no. your question because I'm always wary since I've been on boards. I need to remind you guys to talk to oh, the public. To oh, I'm sorry. That, um, that there's a, a future plan. Yeah. And uh, so if, since they have to come before us, then there's no problem. Right. Yeah, that was a good question because then that that kind of closes out that possibility of something else happening we don't based on this room. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. So. Without being proved. Right. And that's not the case. So. Okay. Um, so we're the, this is this one. So the first one that we're supposed to be reviewing is the establishment, maintenance, or operation of special use will not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, morals, comfort, or general welfare. No. I, I don't think see that's that. Mm -hmm. Special uses will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for purposes already permitted or substantially diminish and impair property values of the neighborhood. Um, if it's no. going as it's going here, I don't see a problem. Yeah, yeah. Not any, I think it's just going to improve the neighborhood. Yes. This, can, you, can you go over each standard? Can you can you expand upon why they why what they presented in the hearing that makes you agree with that? Sure. Okay. Sure. So the one before. You want us to go back to the first one? If you don't mind. Okay. Sure. So the first one, um, established main and operational So issues. they talked about their septic. They talked about um, they're looking for family, uh, local right. um, folks that are going to be involved in you know, the community here doing right. Right. whatever activities are out there. Um, they talked about minimal disturbance of the property overall working to which frankly makes sense to me in terms of cost as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't appear to be any kind of mechanical industrial or commercial construction or no. business going on there so that should not minimal. Hurt. It's minimal. Yeah. Yes. and so that covered a and b yeah. same thing to the property owners i don't see it being a big noise concern or anything like that does anybody else have concerns with b i don't no I think it's fun. It seems really straightforward with what they're going to do. It seems spaced out on the property fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. The establishment of the special use will be in harmony or compatible with its neighbors and general consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, I can't say it's consistent with the neighbors, but I think it's a very positive mm -hmm. step in the right direction. I thought that the the wave was a good example of yes. that, where it's consistent with, with what we're uh, expecting to have in the neighborhood and yeah. right. being right across the river from that. Uh, D, adequate utilities, access road, drainage facilities have been provided. Um, can, I, can I ask them a question still? So your access road, will you be paving it to some sort? Because I believe it's just dirt or stone you said right now? It's, it's gravel. It's kind of a nice gravel base from the previous owner. I'm just going to add more gravel. Okay. Can I ask you, yeah, how long have you owned this property? Since 2018. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh wow. So right. it sounds to me for D as though they have um, either engaged with county or other right. folks to make sure it's all in process. Yeah. Right. Uh, E, adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress, so designed to minimize traffic congestion on public streets. We, we talked about this before. You mentioned 18 people max, right. which is party not, of not six people, many. one right. or two vehicles per. And that's at full capacity, that. right? So yeah. I don't see six, a problem. Six to 12 vehicles maybe right. at a time at full capacity. It's, 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 kind, of a, it's, it's a, not a it's lot. It's kind of a congested 
intersection, but I don't, there's not that many cars, so I don't see it being a problem. It is why I don't. Yeah. F, the special use shall in all other respects conform to the applicable regulations of the district which is located. Yes. They, they reviewed the, the uh, hotel uh, and RV kind of descriptions and even following those guidelines it fits, it fits any requirements set forth for those. So. Okay. So, can we vote? Okay, we do. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Okay, let me just see what it's going to say. A special use permit for the property zone located at 9999 Old Lester Highway. And special use permit is for a clamp ground. So we have a motion to approve that? Mm -hmm. I'll make the motion. And I'll second it. Second. As I recall from the previous meeting, we then have to go through and say how it say that it does meet each of these. That's what you just did. Didn't we just oh, did perfect. Just did yeah. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Congratulations. Can't Good luck. wait. Can't wait. Uh, back to the first page. Oh. Do you have anything else you want to talk about at all? I want you to move to adjourn. What? Oh. Since you're all here, um, <laughs> I know, I know. We're trying to be more efficient with your time and our time in getting out the agenda packets. I know we've talked via email, but I figured it'd be easier for all here. Um, this is the town growing. It's become kind of a staff time constraint to make sure we get them delivered in time for you. Um, so obviously we emailed those and mostly because it was redundant care from last month. Right. Um, and then we have them around here, but the question was, is this okay? Uh, we've been given the green light if you wanted to get, or if you wanted us to get um, a, a tablet or some kind of for you to use for this purpose, that where we can explore that as well. What did you and then you don't have to agree to do the same thing either. So one thing I thought about the tablet was actually a very good idea is in theory, if this is correct, all of our monthly things could be downloaded to that, correct? Yes. So going forward, when I come to this meeting, I can bring that you tablet, bring that and all my stuff will be on it, and yeah. it'll, it'll have enough storage to store yes. all the stuff from every month. Okay. Exactly. So I personally like that yeah. idea. I like that idea. Um, I like paper copies. It saves some, paper. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess a paper copy of the, what do you call it? The agenda. The agenda is nice to have, because I like to make notes on it when we get here. Yeah. Um, but I'm good. We, we can have that for you at the beginning of each meeting. Okay. In the... We can look to, I had to ask, but the, all the new, at least like iPads and Surface Pros have a pen where you could make notes on them as well. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that's great. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that saves you and the prep work is mailing out one of these packets ahead of time. I don't think that that's necessary. That seems like, you know, a little overkill because we can look at it on our computer at home. Yeah. You know, electronically at home until we get here. Now, whether there's a paper copy here or not, yeah. That's different, but getting one in the mail ahead of time, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. No. Right. It, it, I used to like it, but it's so electronic, like, and having the, <coughs> the tablet here would be fine. Yeah. And it's still real paper. And yeah. we'll pursue that option with the tablets, and um, me and Adrian will split to we come up with that for y'all. And can we get the email sent out to us electronically like that? Because that works out good for me personally because I can put it on my computer with big screens. Oh, yeah, like I saw emailing the agenda. Yeah, that won't change. Okay. Just look at that by email. Right, yeah. Okay. right. Yeah. And the tablet saves all the extra. Yes, it's, it's so much paper. It's more efficient. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Figure a new board, I mean, it's, I know the tablet has been done historically, but figure new board seems to have different preferences. So we will look at that and hopefully have some information too. Good. Okay. Thank cool. you. The main thing's changing is they're not getting the packet mailed to them. Correct. We'll have the copy here, and then um, so we'll know either by next meeting if we can get them or if we can't, or if we already had them. So we right. should have an answer pretty quick for you all. Okay. Great. Right. Good. Our motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. Second. Oh, second. Third. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. That was that a, wasn't too not bad. A short one.